Welcome to another episode of Crit Hit Coffee Break, the show where we occasionally just have podcasts with guests talking about things ranging from meta statements on the lore of certain games, it'll, it'll happen one day, to what's going on with the site and more pressing topics. This episode is actually going to be related to depression, specifically in how it interacts with content creators, both in the case of us and also others. Uh, I'm Arlian, by the way, for those uh, who don't recognize me by my voice, and with me today I have Chef. Yep, my, I'm Chef, yep. And uh, Vodstock. Hello. So, with the basic introduction out of the way, feel free to mention a bit as to what you guys do as content creation. Uh, well... I used to make simple rant videos on the subject of gaming and technology until I hit a kind of brick wall. When I started to stream, I got kind of lucky, but then my content kind of went downhill from there. But from this point onwards, I'm completely revamping my channel and hoping to bring out videos focused more on more sort of obscure or abstract themes in gaming. As, as in, like, not just the gameplay, but what it means to people. Alright, well, uh, I, I make mostly uh, Hearts of Iron 4 videos, the uh, Paradox Grand Strategy game. Uh, I also focus on a lot of other military-based games, first-person shooters, strategy games, that sort of thing. But yeah, mostly I, I do Hearts of Iron 4 videos. So, with the sort of basics of, like, what we do, one of the topics I wanted to address here is just what it is that you enjoy as a content creator well personally i enjoy the fact that it feels like it gives me a purpose and a way to sort of exercise or work towards a goal or a dream i've always had and since i was like a very small child, I've always wanted to be a content creator on YouTube, but I've never had the time or the money. But now I've got a healthy balance of both, and watching myself improve over time, as well as knowing exactly what I need to do every day, is a really nice thing to sort of have there. And not only that, but I like the comments and the community, and people kind of giving back, in a way, the passion that I put out there. So yeah, that's it for me. All right, you go, well, Vodstock. For, all right. Well, for me, I basically, um, well, what I really enjoy about it, I guess, is the, the schedule it brings to my life. Because right now I'm unemployed due to mostly my mental health issues. And I, like, without the, the videos that I make, I really don't have anything to look forward to when I wake up. So at least this gives me, like, a constant schedule that I can continue to do. And it gives me something productive to do. And I do enjoy it. Um, yeah, that's about it for me. I can actually really get on board with that, because, like your situation, I'm unemployed due to mental health complications on my end, and then just further complications, and I've always been really passionate about gaming, and s sometimes about, like, what I feel about certain games, so it's been really nice to sort of highlight my thoughts, try and get a bit of coverage to games, including lesser known ones. I'm like, look at this, it's good. I enjoy it. It makes my sometimes dismal experience slightly less dismal and makes the sheer amount of time I spend escaping into video games seem slightly more productive when I get to, you know, work at just like piling away at reviews plus it's been neat for the interview component of just talking to people on the game developer side of things especially since i was going to be a computer program analyst way back when i was less disillusioned cries <laughs> <laughs> so with that said and having fall through on like a lot of a reoccurring thing is like all of us including me have this thing of enjoying this because it brings the sense of purpose and schedule 
Uh, would you care to talk more about content creation as a purpose, as a driving force in the fulfillment it provides? Well, it can take hours out of my day that I feel like I would otherwise spend either gaming or just doing something else that's not very productive. So knowing that I've put work into something and seen a result afterwards and other people seeing this as well and, and you know, being pleased with it, it's kind of, it makes me feel like it's, I guess it kind of legitimizes the whole thing. Now, I, d I don't exactly feel like just some kid in his bedroom making these weird videos about weird games that not everybody plays, but I kind of am that. But this kind of gives me, like I said, a feeling of purpose, and that's all because of like several factors, including the whole having an audience thing, being actually passionate about what I'm doing, and so on. It really helps me to kind of believe in myself. Yeah, for me, um, I would liken it to almost like an artist. You know, like an artist will sometimes spend weeks or months painting this picture, and, and then when you're finally done, and you see it yourself, and everything just lines up perfectly with how you envisioned it, it makes it all worth it. And that's the same thing for YouTube videos, because every once in a while, I'll do a video that, like, it goes exactly how I planned it, and it just makes it all worth it for me. And, and that makes me keep wanting to do it, wanting to get that really good result. And my end is a bit complicated, because while I wanted to get into content creation, I'm terrible on the editing part. And it took me a while to actually get that proper driving force. Someone had finally went, you know, we should actually act on that thing we've talked about for years and i was like okay down i'm down with writing let's go and you know away we went so it, it's nice because it makes my hobby of gaming feel a lot more productive i get this end result and especially because i have contacts now in like an actual work field i've started to refine like actual habits for like QA and other thing and note taking, the analysis of the gameplay systems, uh, like a lot of these little things actually are sort of coming together into like, oh, these are actually like sort of almost work skills. These would be useful in the right context if I could just find it. So I get that feeling of like, I'm not so useless while doing it. And then when people actually watch a video, like the interviews we host or some of the reviews, I I admit I feel this bit of like pride and glee that like some people have actually decided they want to stick around and hear more of our reviews and more of the interviews. That said, and I suppose this leads to the next subject, is... Getting disheartened when it comes to YouTube mentally or when there's issues on the channel is a very real thing. And it's crushing sometimes when you like spend hours, days, sometimes even like I know shrimps at times spent time like a week or more on like a specific video that's been running in the back burner and we'll release it and it can be a video we're both so proud of for the writing or the edits in it but we're small and we don't have a lot of networking because I am a tremendously awkward penguin I I'm not socially well adjusted super shy don't have like friends who will post stuff to reddit for me or face so th there's a couple of people that support me with like sharing my stuff and i can count them on like not even all the fingers of my hand and i i, I appreciate the hell out of those people but it's still disheartening when we spend like weeks working on a video and it gets like 20 views after like a month mm-hmm and then someone else posts a meme about like 
just some sort of shit posting meme and it just breaks a few thousand or some trash heap posts uh you know someone's dead body and it goes viral hmm uh and then every single time something's gone wrong be it lost footage lost audio or corrupted audio um things that occur with cast members which has happened with basically everyone including just being sick and this sense of like obligation i get with it because i get a sense of obligation to the channel and to like working enough but yeah what about on you guys' end well i'm kind of with you there on the fact that we can spend hours and hours working hard at our I suppose I'd trade, really. And then some absolute, you know, piece of shit can uh, upload. I mean, they could upload themselves, like, eating cereal or something and get many, many times more the kind of views that we're used to. But that's the kind of stuff I try not to think about. To me, success on the, the site, or at least with small channels, should be seen as relative. So I kind of don't count these people as people to compete with but rather people to take cues from not the bad people but you know the big people who can basically do anything i have had many occasions where i've had something like something happen in real life like i think it was last week i couldn't upload all week because i couldn't sleep because my dad was actually hit by a car and my grandmother went to hospital so it was kind of like on top of the life obligations i already have it was just extra stress and i just couldn't do anything and that was a shame really because it was after a really positive spell for both my channel and my life i'd had a solid month of good sleep going to the gym and all sorts of stuff like that and that's actually so much more important than people think but anyway in terms of difficulties on the channel, I don't suppose I've had many, other than the fact that behind the numbers, I feel as if, and this is only sometimes, I feel as if I haven't earned what I have. Most of my views come from a video that got inexplicably popular, and it's only a few thousand, it's nothing huge. At the time, I put as much effort as I could into it, but I had no editing software, a bad mic and stuff like that and i suppose it's only popular because there was no other video like it other than that i had dabbled in live streaming a bit uh which ended up getting me a few hundred per stream which was crazy but then when i changed games i was quite disillusioned with the fact that i then ended up getting views that were let's say much more suited to a channel of my size and while this has left my channel larger than it was before I started, I feel like it's almost artificial. I mean, the people that click the subscribe button are still those people, but I feel like they may not care about me, and seeing the numbers go up and thinking it might just be like printing more dollars to solve financial crises, it kind of does hurt me at times. So, to, to, to combat that, I've pretty much made a vow to stream but at least upload one quality video that i spend perhaps days editing a week and i've only done one so far even that came with its own disappointments but i totally went into flow mode i finished it so much quicker than my previous projects especially with my extra experience with uh video editing software now and i'm honestly feeling pretty good about the channel right now but there are days where i'll just look at my stats and just think wow I've got a long way to go before I'm somebody. Or, wow, other people have really grown a lot faster than me. And a lot of the people that are big now do have that day that comes where they just, they start to blow up and it becomes exponential. I'm yet to see that, but watching the numbers go up is kind of encouraging by itself. But I think to anybody that uploads trash, and I don't mean people who are good and honest and they they try and they can't exactly hit the mark but i mean people who you know film dead people for example those people don't have 
that fulfillment that I as a creator pursuing my dream has. They may have the fame and the money, but they never have the perspective of somebody who has had nothing and is slowly, slowly working their way up. So on that front, that's it from me. I'm just trying to stay positive because the more you think about stuff like that, the, the worse I find it gets. I think for me, what uh, worries and disheartens me sometimes is dislikes. And from what I've seen, you know, a lot of people talking to smaller YouTube creators will say, don't worry about it. But it is kind of disheartening where, you know, you, you'll look at a video and you'll see a bunch of dislikes and you have no idea why, because no one comments and says, well, I don't like this. I think you should do this differently. And what worries me too is not so much the dislikes itself, but it might turn off some people. Cause like if a person clicks on a video with like three likes and two dislikes, they might immediately see that and then click off without even really giving it a chance. So it's kind of like ruining the experience for other people that put kind of, uh, uh, what's the word here? Like time into, you know, dislikes and, and liking videos based on how many likes they have, which is probably not the best thing to do. But it does kind of get annoying, especially when no one gives you any advice on what they didn't like, what they wanted to see change. They just dislike and leave. And on a, you know, on larger videos with like thousands of likes, a couple dislikes doesn't make any difference. But if all you have is like three or four likes on a video, one like can make a big difference. Um, another thing too is you know what constantly comes up in my mind is hate comments, and I've not gotten really any hate comments yet. But I mean, looking at YouTube and you know how many disgusting comments there are. I'm thinking it's only a matter of time before something like that happens. And it kind of is like in the back of my mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, luckily so far, I've not really had any like hate mail or hate comments. I'm hoping I never do, but you, you just can't help but think about that where it's, you know, one of these days it's probably going to happen. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's mostly uh, it for me. I mean, that sort of actually seeks into the, one of the topics I wanted to bring up was just hate messages. I personally haven't, really had that many i mean a lot of what i get from some of the communities i'm part of one of them is new tubers which sort of is there to help like fledgling creators and their, their big thing is like you know if they spend the time to go and write you a hateful message or if they even click dislike on your video it actually benefits you in the long run because it counts as engagement but that doesn't make it it, it, it's like dulling the fact that it's still shitty at that juncture. It, I, I would still actually prefer, like, the comment to just the dislike, since at the very least it would give some sort of constructive feedback. Yeah, that's true. But, I, I mean, quite frankly, I just... I would take the dislike over someone just clicking off without a comment of, hey, so, but maybe it just, it isn't their cup of tea. And that's fine too, honestly. I just, yeah, that's what I get all, like, super thinky about. It's like, is it something we're doing? Is it something we're not doing? Is it something we can really change or adjust? And you don't really get that constructive criticism when you're, like, a small YouTuber for the most part, you'll see it pop up a lot on bigger YouTubers because, you know, people in the fan base will just interact and engage a lot. And yeah, you don't really get that until you hit certain thresholds. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. I mean, you have anything to say on hate comment, Chef? Ah, uh, well, um, I've only ever. I have tons and tons of nice comments. I think I get a good amount of comments for the small channel I am. And I've only really received one hate comment. And I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous. Somebody said to me that they genuinely hope I die a slow and painful death. Now that's like, bruh. <laughs> I do not know how someone can know me enough, can know anybody enough, who is just trying to like, you know, do their thing, get ahead. I don't know how they can know anybody enough or that well, or how anybody could have hurt them enough for them to say something like that. Honestly, my opinion on that, it's just that it's kind of, I would be upset about it, but instead, I just kind of found it strange, kind of funny. And I always tell myself, hey, the more hate you get, 
it kind of shows that you made it. Negative opinions on most things are generally a lot more rare than uh, good ones. So it's kind of like, well, okay, that means I've uh, reached the threshold to receive hate. And that was the only time. I just replied to him, ah, me too. And it kind of diffused him instantly. Uh, one of the time was somebody just causing trouble on my stream. And well, because I had a lot of people in live chat, they pretty much took him down for me, which I don't condone but i mean it's kind of sweet watching people who think you're uh important i guess you know like fighting in your corner so they think usually i tend not to respond to that kind of stuff but like it's been said i feel like it's an inevitability uh, uh, it's kind of like a it just happens and i'm i'm not bothered by the time i'm big enough to receive a lot of hate comments i won't care because every time someone says something to me I tell myself it's just jealousy and I've I'm not one of those people who is just like well you know you tell me I need to improve you're a dick you're jealous I I, I really really appreciate constructive criticism much much more actually than a comment that says hey great video keep it up and I mean while that really warms my heart and drives me to move forward I'm constantly looking at ways to improve myself and I think well nobody gets to the big leagues unless they get a couple of lucky viral videos by half-assing their way through it. And a lot of people work hard and then half-ass their way through it because they can. But that's a whole different topic entirely. And I think we've touched upon it already. So in the end, I think hate comments are kind of like pointless and sad. But the way I look at it is, well, I'm at the beginning of my journey and they don't have a journey. They're entertained by making people feel bad about themselves and it's not something I understand really so I just kind of don't think about it so yeah that's it so sort of doubling back thematically and we'd already actually slightly touched on this but like one of the things there is there's pressures and demands that sort of pertain to the whole creation process and intertied with that I, I've also noticed that there's a frequent complaint of lack of sleep among content creators, so I figured I'd just sort of ask if you wanted to touch on that, Chef. Oh yeah, of course. I um, have always really struggled with lack of sleep, at least mostly in my uh, more adolescent years. Partially because of, an, uh, I guess, an addiction to technology, but a lot of the times when I'm in bed, that's when my mind becomes really strangely active and sometimes negative thoughts surface or sometimes I'm lying alone in bed and it takes longer to get to sleep than I would have liked and then I become aware of like well I'm not doing anything I'm just sitting there and I'm I'm not asleep I'm just I'm just there you know what I mean it's it's wasted time in my opinion I hate that I have to sleep. I love sleep when I can when I can do it, but I hate the fact that it makes today go away, brings the responsibilities and pressures of tomorrow straight to you. It means your night's over, the the the, the respite you have from you know the working world or whatever else or the educational world. You know, sleeping is kind of like waiting on fallout you just pause into space and time goes forward automatically it's kind of teleporting to the next day and honestly most of my sleep issues are because either i really want to get get more done or do more with my life but sleep's in the way or because well sometimes there are really exciting days where i just want to stay up and and talk to people all night or work on my channel all night and there have been days recently where I've hit personal goals for myself and I haven't been able to sleep because I've been so happy it's strange I've been happy excited to upload more and while those are high points they really don't feel like it the next morning when I have to get up well for me uh, I would say lack of sleep actually isn't a problem I have the exact opposite problem where I sleep too much because uh, one of the prescription medications I'm on is mirtazapine and I take that basically to help me sleep and to help my appetite and that just knocks me out and I'll end up sleeping for like 13 or 14 hours a night is pretty usual for me. Um, 
but the thing is, since I'm not employed and since I'm not in college or anything, I don't have anything else going on. I actually have plenty of time to do videos because that's literally all I have to do. I mean, I have nothing else I can be doing, unfortunately. So uh, as of now, it works. But I often wonder and I kind of worry, like, what's it going to be like when I start, you know, getting a job, going to college, doing stuff that requires me to actually leave the house? So I'm probably not going to have time to do my channel at all or maybe, you know, have like one video every couple weeks because I'll just be so busy. So that's kind of another worry I have going back to the previous point. Uh, but yeah, lack of sleep, not really an issue for me just because I'm on so many drugs. I think Murderzapine was the medication I was taking. I need to eventually get... It actually... I had I have very weird sleeping patterns. You guys might have noticed this from the channel for like when I'm awake or leaving messages and then when I actually fall asleep and my sleep cycle is just this erratic shit show because I tend to have first off I'm generally not in the greatest of health so I'm like man I feel sick man I'm super stressed and need to do more oh have I done every have I talked to this person have I scheduled this interview for like five weeks from now have I like posted all our stuff on social media have I contacted everyone and it just goes on and I'm just like oh I'll sleep later <laughs> When, I, when I'm actually sure everything is done. And mm. I, I like push it and push it and push it. And sometimes there's just points in time where I don't sleep. Because I'm like, I would like to get some gaming in. I would like to get something fun in. Because I put the amount of time that it would be like actually a job in, essentially. I can't do much else. So I just, I write, I do the social media, I contact people who are in the like developer community i try and reach out to other content creators i look for people who are in the tabletop community because i have a project involved in that and it just consumes so much time that i didn't realize it since i'm doing like that aspect of things on my own like if i had to do editing too i i cannot imagine how miserable i'd be yeah it sounds like quite a lot of work yeah, uh, I I just yeah, cause like my our stuff isn't as off the cuff as some people are for the reviews where they just open up a game and like ramble. I saw this one review actually that like made me grateful for the work I put into some of the scripts, cause like some of them I've worked on for several days of just like writing them, and sometimes being like this is terrible erasing it other than keeping a few like key points and then like doing it again from scratch and i'd still take that over putting out like a review that i think is subpar like mm -hmm, I'm, I'm obsessive about it and i guess that's sort of the pressure on my end is like even if it's very niche for who it appeals to I want to make sure that the content I get out there is good. And I think it comes into that thing of the value, since I feel that there's this value of work, of feeling useful, of purpose in this. It also means, like, in return, it demands something from me. It demands that perfection, that dedication to it. And yeah that definitely contributes to horrible sleep patterns i mean sometimes i oversleep sometimes it's the opposite thing of i'll just be like dead from pushing myself for so long that i'm like oh i went to sleep at 9 a.m today i guess i'll wake up at 4 p.m <laughs> yeah understandable but i i, I think if i may uh interject one thing that's super important to remember is it's kind of kind of similar to what you said but nobody can deny hard work if you keep working hard eventually it's going to strike a chord with somebody and i think the purpose we as creators have to fulfill is making somebody think well oh wow this is good or to feel something and i think well if you've got that work ethic it's something that not much of the competition at this level has yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah. I, I, I Like, literally out of my videos, there's two that have really struck 
Like, a bunch of the interviews have gotten way more views, but the two things that really stuck towards for me were, like, these two videos I got feedback on. One was a review where after the guy said it, he popped into my, like, after he saw it, he popped in the Discord for, like, my channel. It was like, hey, I just got this game, because, like, I saw the review and it was so good. And I was just like, oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's what it's all about. I influenced That's... a singular person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> so good. Yeah. Uh, and That's then, it, yeah, it's because, it, like, again, a part of this is I focus on indie games because there's so many titles out there and so many, like, sure, there's bad indie games. I'm going to be touching on some of them because... Frankly, people should probably be warned that the, that some of these games that look sort of neat aren't. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, there's plenty of games that are great and will probably get totally overlooked. It's why I don't just like immediately, like I didn't immediately dive on Darkest Dungeon or Hollow Knight. I'm eventually going to do it just for funsies because I love darkest dungeon and hollow knight i've been told is just great so i would like to go in and put in my own two cents on it i might not even do a review for that one and just putts around in it because it's been done to death and i have not heard anyone talk shit about it except for like a checkpoint system mm -hmm. but yeah no it's it's neat and then just also someone else, like, I we posted up a random gameplay video just for fun and because, like, not all of my gameplay is me just dying, okay? It happens a lot in the reviews because Shrimp is a underling with a vicious sense of humor. Cries. Uh, but yeah, no, someone also was like, oh, that's actually really good for, like, gameplay and showing me how to use this character. And I was like... Ching, Ching, that expertise. But um, I guess one of the other things I wanted to touch on was just the idea of negativity in the community, and I don't mean this as in, well, not necessarily the community is in the creator and his audience, but also just the community amongst creators. And we've already sort of touched on one of those examples with uh, you know very tasteless postings on YouTube <laughs> and like in, in my personal thing I have enough negativity in my life from a number of sources that I don't want our content to be negative and like, of anyone who's, like, of any YouTuber, YouTubers that I would really like for their community, like, Markiplier has an incredibly positive community. Oh, yeah, he's excellent. And I adore that. And, uh, you know, Jacksepticeye is also, like, very upbeat and friendly. And cry as a nerd. Cry as a nerd. That's just that. And, like, those were examples of people who, like... I was like, you know, I want sort of that chill, laid-back, but exceptionally friendly community. And that's what I want to work towards. Because I can't... I can't actually stand negative communities. They'll turn me off creators. They'll just turn me off the environment. And, I mean, even negativity amongst creators where... It's just like this is a bad idea you like uh, it, it's complicated because like i had a number of people just tell me like it was pointless for what i was doing and that was just a little crushing i guess because it's like if it's pointless for what i'm doing and it's the only thing i can do because like uh like my Basically, my mental health record is so poor that I'm viewed as, like, untenable for being able to hold a job, and I'll outright get rejected from, like, any number of them for it. Of just being, like, an unstable ticking time bomb. Mm. Oh, yeah. 
that that chronic depression uh <laughs> it's not good then to then to be told like the only avenue i have for like expressing myself and also feeling sort of useful purposeful having direction is pointless it's grim <laughs> what about you though well I don't know, I kind of cringe when I see, well, Pyrocynical has some genuinely good videos, such as his Cuphead video, where he properly, properly evaluates the game and stuff like that. But if you look in the comments, it's just still the same old, I'm gay, and all the other stuff you expect from 12 year olds on YouTube comments. and. That kind of turns me off ever becoming big, but I'm hoping because I'm not gonna be touching on that kind of channel style that I like. I don't know. I I, I think I might avoid it, but eventually I'm I'm, I'm obviously gonna get something strange. A good channel, uh, some ordinary gamers. He's been at it for like years and years, and he's almost at a million now. But his videos, kind of I. I want to say I grew up with him, but he was one of my initial uh, inspirations. He developed a thing where he had a nice, positive community, but he ended up getting a lot of like strange, erotic comments, and they were supposed to be funny, I suppose. But it got to the point where so many people were doing it, it actually created its own negativity, and he got fed up of it, and he had to he had to actually tell his commenters to just stop it because it wasn't constructive it kind of turned him off looking at the comments and stuff like that so i think well really any of us are susceptible to uh the so-called cancerous side of youtube not that that's a very respectable term at all i don't like other creators like i don't know i don't i don't like other creators um dangerously competing to each that with each other like in a way where it's like always trying to step on the little guy or maybe even try your hand at the big guy because you want to overtake him you know like uh jake paul and rice gum and all that nonsense i think well my, like while i don't have personal problems with those people i find their way of doing things to be quite destructive and it pretty much keeps up the very individualistic kind of style we've as i guess a civilization grown to have i think it's just people spitting on people and i think youtube should be a free place for creativity real creativity where someone can get their voice heard and they can make a change and one thing i've always wanted to do Looking at Markiplier as a role model, because I never really had a father figure, his morals and the way he directs his channel, I think is great, like you said. And I think the amount he's done for his fans and charity is very, I suppose, um, it's something to aspire to. I've always wanted to do some sort of charity event. In fact, I'm going to try to soon. But... I do want to be a force for good if I ever get big and you know as well as this just being my hobby I want people to know that I'm I'm much more concerned with the state of the world than I am my own channel or my own wallet because let's face it once you get like a few million dollars as a regular person it doesn't make much difference if you have a few more and that's just from my perspective obviously I've I've I mean, hell, what do you even need past the first million? Exactly. I unless mean, you're unless spending... you're, like, intending on, like, rolling cigars out of $100 bills, you should probably be, like, I don't know, finding a charity support, not getting, like, a gold-plated car and a yeah, chihuahua exactly. with a diamond-studded collar. Ah, oh, jeez, man, these people, you see them with their, like, gold teeth and stuff, and these are the same people that are saying, like, Oh yeah, you gotta be like, be a good person. And I'm like, but what have you done? And I don't think it's any of my business, and I don't think people are, 
or should be expected to to contribute to more positive more uh what's the word i say i want to say like uh almost more aware kind of actions such as donating to charity and stuff like that i don't think people should have to do that but i think at a certain point you've got to do it at least a little bit because i mean what is it something like the top few percent one of uh the most uh wealthy people on earth it's like one have... percent to that's yeah. where the one percent thing it's like the top one percent has 90 percent of like the world's uh income essentially it's resources at their disposal yeah exactly and i mean is horrendously <laughs> lopsided and then behooves people of like if you have this small percentage of people dominating the wealth, then who's actually going to help the rest of the people? It's not going to be the people hoarding it. So no, exactly. whether you're in the middle or even like close to the bottom and there's just something you can contribute by like, I, one of the things I could do since it didn't really require the same rigmarole as like getting proper paid employment as I like did volunteering at soup kitchens. Oh, that's a good also, thing to do. Also, because, like, when I was so poor I couldn't afford food, it also meant I got food. <laughs> I I have been tremendously poor in my life. Oh, man. Yeah, I've, uh... I've had really bad times myself, and I mean, I owe it to some very strong, determined people in my family uh, for digging me out of this mess, but I was, at some point, Living in a, a terrible area, barely, barely living pay paycheck to paycheck. Honestly, like, not. And I never really had a childhood. And I'm not saying this like I think I'm the only person who's gone through this. Because there are way too many people going through it. And I suppose that's one thing people like Jake Paul don't have. They don't have that perspective. It's I can imagine very difficult to sympathize and especially empathize with people who are in such a horrible position if you've never experienced anything other than wealth yourself and i think it's almost almost something of a responsibility i think for when you get to a huge tremendous level of wealth you've got to you've got to give something back i mean i can't sleep easy at night sometimes just thinking about the state of the world and that's that's half the reason my depression is so bad and it keeps coming back no matter what it, I could be okay. I am okay. I, I'm in such a good position at the moment. The world's at my feet. I've got a nice job coming up. I'm, you know, at the college I wanted to go to. I'm finally, finally able to create and everything. And I'm, I'm happy in that regard. But I still live on this planet with these other people. And a lot of these people need help. And God, it just, you know what I mean? It just makes you think a bit too much. Mm-hmm watching the state of things as we find new and incredibly interesting ways to oppress each other. Yep, exactly that. Any Anything you'd care to toss in here, Vodstock? Uh, well, I'd say what really frustrates me is, you know, kind of like the points we've been touching on, where um, people with a lot of influence don't really use that influence for good. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's really... I, I don't know if it's like jealousy, but it, it does honestly make me a little bit jealous when I see, you know, really famous people on Twitter that just post absolute garbage that doesn't help anyone. And yet these tweets get millions of shares and millions of likes. But it's like if they talked about something positive or, you know, talked about an issue that no one knew about, well, that could actually help the issue because since they have such a big following, you know, if like three million people suddenly now know about something they didn't know about before that was going on in the world. Well, maybe they'd, you know, open up their wallet to donate to a cause, something like that. I think, sadly, though, we, we've sort of fallen into this thing that negativity gets the views, gets... Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody, yeah. everybody wants a villain and the hero. It's Just the age-old... Exactly, it's the age-old formula, really, for entertainment. I mean, it's how Keemstar came to, like, fame. He, he preyed on, like gossip essentially and like that went to its you know the inevitable conclusion of he eventually threw someone who was innocent under the bus in, in oh, the search God. of a story yeah uh, I, I, that is just it's just despicable really i mean 
I just, I don't have it in me to even consider something like that. Like, I'm a firm believer of be nice to others until they give you a damn reason to not be nice, and then I'm not very nice. But I don't actively go out of my way to make people's lives difficult because, well, all I'm doing is wasting my time and I'm not gaining anything. What I prefer to do is to just, you know, like, talk things over with people. What Keemstar does and... I mean, you know, he like, technically people... gains from it. He monetized shitting on people. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. Think of a, a collab as being like uh, you share experiences, you share audiences. Keemstar steals stuff like that from people. Keemstar's entire brand is taking uh, taking influence, taking fame, you know what I mean? Like, the bigger the target he goes for, the better for him, really, because, hell, he might even turn a significant amount of uh, those people's fans, you know, a a against them. Such as when... I, I personally like most of what iDubbbz TV does, but when... Because, I mean, he calls out the really bad people on the, on the site. Perhaps not in the nicest way, but I don't think that's relevant. But, like, when he uploaded the uh, Rice Gum content cop, he got something like 800 thousand subscribers in one day which is just wow. mind-blowing and it makes you think i think he used some of his influence for good he took or let's say converted some of rice gum's audience who are i suppose living vicariously through him with with his wealth and stuff like that they they took people whose role model is perhaps going to be just a horrible, selfish, shallow person, and brought it to somebody who doesn't have a filter, but has a good heart. I think everything, or most things that iDubbbz does, I think I think they're quite well-intentioned in the end. I've only ever seen him call out people who are just absolute dicks, and are getting too big for their boots. And I mean, it hasn't been too successful at taking rice gum down, but I can't think of many worse people for kids to aspire to be. I'm actually not familiar with Rice Gum. Oh, well, all you need to know is Rice Gum finds rape funny for some reason. He has done a few things where he's just out outwardly lied to people. He tricks his subscriber base into things like, well, there was this thing he did and it was the clickbait challenge, but the winner never actually got his money. And it was supposed to give him like 10k. Uh, and honestly, he just keeps really bad company. And it's it's just the typical, I suppose, rich person in LA kind of stereotype. And I don't want to tar every rich person in LA with that brush, but you know the kind that's presented in the media a lot? Mm. He f seems yeah. like a physical embodiment of all the poison, the fakeness. And just the, the selfishness that I think just needs to go away. It's gone too far at this point. This this guy is, he's rich because he's a dick. And a lot of rich people are dicks. And a lot of dicks are rich. And it's just so concerning. And I think, well, while Keemstar is there, while, while Keemstar is there being a dick to people, taking their audience away from them, and whatever else, he's only taking them to another negative person. He's creating hype out of arguments. And I think people need to focus on their own lives a bit more and find ways, like you said, to do good things with their influence rather than to just fulfill themselves with a load of crap. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of uh, sociopathy for profit. So, that whole gloomy and slightly charged subject aside, uh, I suppose this sort of leaves off with how do we as content creators deal with depression and combat it? I'm fucking shit at this, so you can, one of you two can start. You know what? We've started with Chef all the time. Vodstock, you can start. Alright, well, uh, how I combat my depression really is is basically just um, you know talking to others that usually does the trick or like playing a game with a friend that can help uh, you know just like having a friendly ear to, to listen to you know you, you ranting about problems or whatever 
and it's kind of a mutual thing too because you know some other friends might have issues and you know you can offer to be basically uh you know listen to their problems and, and it kind of helps you know just getting that off your chest you know whatever is bothering you but yeah i've found that video games definitely help me and, and then the weirdest part is like <laughs> for me playing like really intense like first person shooter games violent games that sort of thing that actually calms me down, which is the weirdest thing because, you know, I've been told for the longest time, you know, to avoid those sorts of games if you're dealing with, like, depression or anxiety or stress. But for me, it actually kind of helps. Um, I guess how, like, I'm pretty bad actually with dealing with mine because I have, I'm, I have ADHD, that's one of my things, and it's severe enough that I have difficulty at multitasking. So when I get on a really big roll for when it comes to writing, I hyper-focus because when I get scatterbrained, I get nothing done. Uh, I'll be able to do like a lot of stuff, but when it needs like something I need to crunch down on like a review, I don't get much done. But when I start hyper-focusing, I will forget to sleep, I will forget to eat. And it is horrible for my health. So those times when I can just sit down and game casually are actually like healthy compared to the work. Cause like as much as I get this sense of purpose from the videos and it helps in a sense with the, like the listlessness and this idea of like the, in my case, the constructive aspect is helpful, but there's an interplay of whilst it can be helpful, the process isn't always that great. And then... I mean, I, I guess a lot of it is my fiancé is part of what keeps me in check for my depression, because she sort of tries to make sure that I maintain healthy habits to sort of curb when things get really wrong. And... Yeah, th I mean, I have things I wish I could do like I miss playing certain games with friends but I've fallen out of contact with them because that was how I used to deal with things is like play something like Town of Salem or Guild Wars 2 or DFO with friends or like one of the games I was reviewing just to get like some insight into the co-op but people got busy with school or other stuff so yeah not not the best as i said at dealing with this yeah that's definitely true i mean unfortunately you know me being in a world of unemployment and not doing anything like most of my friends are not really in the same boat so they're really not available to do much all that often because they're busy with work or school or whatever so it can be kind of depressing when kind of no one's around to talk or do anything with you and my fiance is solo games for life basically uh, it's, 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 there's a running gag of uh, I ask her if we'll play a co-op game and she's like yes and then I'm like oh shall we play it tomorrow and she's like no like maybe next month or something <laughs> or like next year and I'm like oh sad but I mean I sort of knew going in that she was more of a solo player it's just I am a very social gamer but most of my friends are all anti-social gamers or just not available so I'm just like yeah. all alone it, it it makes the depression actually hit a bit harder sometimes which I guess is part of why I throw myself into things so much is when I can find that thing that I'm comfortable at delving into on my own it, it helps and it's also like why I throw myself so much into the work thing which sadly means when it does poorly, I'm just like, oh, sad, super sad. I, I'd like to, I'd like to be able to do things more constructive in the future. Like if I ever get a large enough audience, I'd like to do like what Chef's going to be doing with, uh, I believe the charity you said you're going to be supporting was the Mind one. Yeah, that's correct. Like, doing something for, like, a mental health awareness charity would be great. I, the closest I come to any of that right now is I'm part of a community, uh, gamers fighting depression, and I just, 
occasionally poke around there and lend people an ear when they're feeling crappy because I personally like helping people. It's just one of those moments of I feel productive, useful, and it's that thing that I didn't always get and I like being able to offer people that support that I didn't get. Yeah, and that can help you too sometimes because like if you have that satisfaction that you help someone through a, through a hard time it makes you feel better as well yeah it's it is the uh, whole thing of not being entirely altruistic because whilst you're helping someone that altruism is also partly based out of self-satisfaction and i acknowledge that that's there that i like helping people out of like this humanistic they are a person, therefore we should help them, but makes me feel like I have a purpose. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I get that. Definitely. I think, well, just why not help people? I mean, it's it's not hard most of the time, you know? It's, it takes a certain mm. form of effort, I think, to put, mm. to put kind of time into just actively being a dick. You know what I mean? It's kind of like... I think <laughs> it works both ways. Because yeah. you can deflect people by being a dick, and that avoids effort. Because investing yourself into helping someone can be a lengthy time investment. Like, I've sometimes just... I, I've, like, suddenly noticed on the clock, like, oh, I've been, like, listening to someone and helping them deal with stuff, and it's, like, four hours later. And I'm like, that is a lot of my day gone, and I still need to work. But people need that help they need that guidance especially when they like tackle situations they're not familiar with uh, being a dick i i don't actually necessarily think it's more effort because it's frequently done to sort of shut down people oh yeah i mean sometimes being being nice is very difficult and it's also not always completely obvious how to do it but i think i'm the opportunity to be nice to people is kind of constant but the opportunity to do something nice is i feel more rare than an opportunity to do something mean like decisions yeah. don't always they yeah, don't yeah. always sort of um present themselves but i think if say someone i mean i don't know how many other people that guy wishes dies a slow and painful death but just think he could be going from video to video saying that whereas I'll only comment something nice when I mean it, if you know what I mean. If yeah, I if sense. I don't like a video, I'll be like, oh, hey, dude, well, here's what you can improve on, blah, blah, blah. Usually I say something like, well, good effort, or, you know, I liked this, this, and that, because they can take something away from that, not just, you gay, or, or something similar, you know? So yeah. I think, well, it's, I think, I don't know. I feel like you need to be more <laughs> dedicated to, be, to, to being a douchebag. You, you have to... I mean, these people must not be very selective with who their dicks do. I'm not that selective with who I'm nice to, but when it comes to an action, I think it's definitely... definitely harder to consistently be a dick. Because a lot of the time, there's just, like, nothing to be a dick about. I don't know, some people are very specifically dicks to people they think they can kick while they're down and get away with it. Which is pretty shitty. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, some people are just like, you'll you'll see them be like generally sort of nice and then a dog pile is happening and they have no stake in it, but they jump in, act like a dick anyways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it, it is what it is. Um, I don't, I don't think the anonymity helps either because you oh, can no. kind of like hide behind a profile. No one knows who you are and no matter how much of a dick you are to someone, no one's gonna really do anything about it, which is exactly. unfortunate. Yeah, there is a well, there are numerous psychological studies. Uh, as a student of psychology, I obviously know a lot of pointless stuff, but um, a lot of psychological uh, studies definitely support that anonymity works Lowers wonders on making people act differently. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, for example, Ash uh, he made a study with lines. All the lines were. Uh, like quite similar in length and each person there had to choose what they thought was I think the shortest line on the screen and there were about eight 
confederates people who were obviously being paid to be there and there was one like legit person that was being tested and despite the fact that the people were quite obviously wrong they would all give the same incorrect answer leaving the last guy under social pressure obviously who would then also conform but when it came to writing down your answers instead of uh instead of you know calling them out anonymity uh kind of actually made uh conformity decrease by something like 60 percent so having a mask gives gives people way more power than they know how to deal with yeah yeah i i often wonder why people are just complete pieces of shit when they can be i just don't understand why <laughs> although i, I would mean... say you know anonymity can help because for me you know, with social anxiety especially the anonymity helps me because like uh, you know unfortunately to say this but if you guys like lived next to me i probably would have never met you because i don't put the effort in to like really meet people in real life because i don't have a social life at all so at least with this anonymity i feel safe enough where i can contact people through the computer screen and i can at least get some form of, of social interaction by that mm. yeah i i'm quite social myself just because i don't know i find for some reason i mean i never initiate conversations with people i don't know but a lot of right. people just come up and talk to me which i'm so grateful for because otherwise i'd be pretty stuck and i think it's those people who are the most valuable people in terms of helping with social anxiety anyway because they're kind of the yin to your yang they're there to pick you up because they're already up there if you know what i mean yeah you know you're you're, you're struggling and that person kind of hoist you up and they're like hey dude it's not so bad i i wanted to talk to you so that's something and these are the people i think that will have big friend groups and then i mean you end up naturally kind of making more friends and i think there's an element of luck in that but honestly when it comes down to it i think it's how much you really want to change like i was at the point where like whenever the slightest thing went wrong suicide was the first thought i mean that's that probably sounds stupid it probably sounds ridiculous but i mean it sounds like it to me as well but the fact that like oh i dropped my pencil i want to kill myself was even a thought process i had it's just unreal i think these people have really helped me out of it and not only that but the confidence i've gained from uh uploading videos and even like musical covers where i'd sing and i just can't sing in front of people so i don't know how i manage that they've worked wonders on my social life and how i present myself the pride I take in how I look, how I act, and how I speak and all that. I mean, it's just like, it's unreal how much the things you probably don't realize make a difference, make a difference. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I don't, I actually have difficulty with that, uh, with like physical presentation. It's part of why I avoid it a lot. Why like, there's no little visual representation of me in any of the reviews is because like, I grew up being talked down about my physical appearance for like a good 19 years and was just like nope just just a lot of nope I'll I'll avoid it as best as I can the only profile picture up is a result of my fiance being like this looks adorable at least put up one thing so I did <laughs> and uh, uh otherwise I'm not super keen on it and i still actually have trouble with the aspect of like i avoid mirrors oh boy and i not really super attentive towards like uh, appearance i wear clothes out of utility yeah so yeah. like i have just a bunch of like semi-identical like black t-shirts and i just oh, alter I between them as they like uh, you know, and a bunch of them are like hand-me-downs too that are like three or four sizes too big for me because I'm like real thin, so it's just sort of funny because they're just a bunch of carbon copies of black t-shirts with like sort of faded emblems and I'm like, oh man. Yeah, I see what you mean. I've fortunately grown up being told I'm good looking a lot but never like believing it because I mean, when I look in the mirror, I mostly see my dad, and I do not want to be like him. Same. It's absolutely the example of what not to be as a man. 
same. Uh, there, there's a lot of, I, 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 parenting skills are things that I'm not going to be taking from either of mine. Uh, yeah, yeah. that went dark fast. Uh, well, I mean, sometimes it kind of just does, doesn't it? I mean, that's how you get, I find when people have, uh, an emotional investment, I think that's when you get some of the most interesting discussion. Like, this whole thing, for example, it's just been like, I don't know, I kind of feel more normal now. I don't know if any of you guys feel that way. I kind of feel uh, a bit more hopeful, and it's not that I like seeing other people not succeeding, but knowing that there are people in the same boat as you, it kind of feels like uh, there's more of a driving force there than it perhaps seemed. I mean, the, the fact that so many smaller people are willing to work together is really, it makes me really hopeful for the future. I mean, th there are a lot of small, smaller channels that are just, they, they display the best work ethic and the highest quality and, and stuff like that. And they just never quite catch that break. And I think the fact that there are lots of people working to help each other get there because it benefits everybody. I think, you know, that's, that's something that's important. And I think getting emotionally involved in stuff like this, it's, really vital to stuff like morale we're all paddling upriver together exactly yeah uh, yeah i suppose if anything i'm actually like when it comes to like depression just a lot of my social anxiety the actual thing that i guess did the most for sort of helping turn me around is like i was homeless something like a decade ago and so horrible spot, panhandling for food, and the guys who I panhandle, uh, I panhandled like some leftover Wendy's food. Okay, I, I had no money to my name, no place, yada. So I'm trying yeah. to get the leftovers they throw out at the end of the day, and. I end up having a conversation with a guy who I'm trying to like mo mooch the stuff that's getting junked anyways and we end up talking about gaming and he's like so do you not have a place and I'm like no and he's like do you want to stay with me and I was just like blah <laughs> that's a lot of trust I know so so you know it was like if you know you get an intent to rent you talk to the landlord there's a basement apartment opening up in the place we're staying and that is how I met basically like these two dudes who have been like best friends with me for a while and who have been like a huge support to me. It was just like this random act of reaching out and they've sort of been one of the more stable things in my life. Like we don't even live in the same city anymore, but yeah. they still reach out to me now and then and vice versa. And it's one of the things that i've really liked about online communities i guess is just because like our friendships become mostly online but it's still there yeah. and it's still that support system yeah it's still that person behind that screen yeah plus it makes for a great like so how did you meet story <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> yeah, yeah definitely yeah an uplifting one though nevertheless yeah it's like one of the few uplifting stories i have in my bag the rest of them are just... like how I live jumping off a moving train. The answer is with a pair of broken sandals. <laughs> Oof. Uh, so, uh, are there any final comments that uh, either of you two have for people viewing, be it for other content creators or just uh, the audience in general? Yeah, well, um, first of all, thanks to you and your team for making this possible. I think that's uh, definitely the first thing I should be saying. Um, <laughs> other than that, um, kind of, I kind of made a video touching on this, but just, I mean, if you're feeling down in the dumps about, especially with the recent changes, which I think, you know, the recent changes to YouTube, I think will end up being a force for good in the end. Um, if you feel down about that, if you feel like you're not being seen and you know you're putting your, your damn hardest work into it, well, just... Try reaching out a little more, but just keep going. Keep working hard because eventually somebody could just notice you and skyrocket you 
up to the clouds, up to the, the godlike levels of sub subscribers. And I mean, overall, just stay positive because that's the best thing you can do for yourself and those around you. Once you start, and, and the hardest step is definitely the first step, but once you start like climbing that ladder, you find that things get a lot easier. The air up there must just be better or something. Just just uh you know keep trying if you're struggling as a content creator with depression you're if you're working hard you know you're, you're doing the right thing and you know that that's it from me um so yeah on to you Fod. yeah well uh, i'll start off by again thanking you guys for doing this i think the idea behind this project is really amazing and um yeah basically just uh, keep chugging along uh it's definitely probably going to take some effort if especially if you're starting with nothing uh because what I've noticed is, you know, some content creators, they will already start off having like professional equipment. They'll already have a fan base that they imported from like Facebook or Twitter or what have you. And so they're already like, you know, they got their shit together. But um, if you're, you know, starting off with nothing, it is probably going to take some effort. And especially, you know, if you have depression, it could make that a very difficult thing. Uh, but I, I would recommend not giving up. Definitely uh, push forward uh, and never stop going. Mm hmm. Uh, I guess if I had to add something onto there, it's if you are a content creator with depression, you're also just, you're not alone. Uh, so, don't really have much to say here other than I highly appreciate that you guys were willing to come over here and talk with me about your personal experiences, about your thoughts on the matter, and just for your time in general. Well, it's it's absolutely no problem on my part. I I like this. It was quite eye opening. It was it was just uh, an entertaining and like informative experience altogether. So yes, uh, you know, thanks again. Yeah, since, definitely. Thank you. Since collabs are the are the time of shameless plugging, there will be uh, information pertaining to. Vodstock and Chef's channels, which you'll probably be seeing both down below in the description, but also in the video itself. Uh, and other than that, uh, would you care to give some more details on the Mind Charity, Chef? Yeah, well, uh, as far as I know, they... I think they're a UK-based company, but I'm not entirely sure. But obviously, there's really so many different like ways you can donate to them and stuff like that some charities are rather closed off but mine is working in collaboration with sites like just giving so it is just so easy to donate and you don't have to set up like a contract with them or anything like that it's just nice quick and simple and i mean with this mental health crisis only worsening as people are on average especially younger people getting less sleep not eating as well working longer hours and stuff like that i think it's a battle that really needs to be fought for the little guy uh, there are a lot of successful happy people out there and i think the more they contribute and the more they help the whole fight against depression and anxiety schizophrenia and and so on i think the more they help the, the stronger our understanding as a society will be of it and hopefully one day it won't be something people are ashamed of because the worst thing you can be is ashamed of it you know one day we'll have this worked out and you know everything is going to be okay so really you know you you donate to mind you're you're donating to just one of the best causes it's i think often overlooked in favor of uh uh, what you call it, uh, physical ailments instead, but depression can be very much physical in indirect ways as well. So, uh, yeah, that's all from me about mind. But by all means, if if you're interested, please check them out and uh, you know consider donating because it doesn't have there to be a lot. So be links. Yeah, that too. <laughs> There's um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a lot, and if everyone donated just a little bit, we could make. A big big change so yeah that's all lastly i would like to give thanks to a pair of communities one is the uh they're a pair of reddit communities and despite the fact that i mostly have a lot of bad 
history with Reddit because I just don't generally understand it because I only lurk in three places. Uh, three or four. They would be the Gamers Fighting Depression Discord. Well, it's a Reddit, but it also has an associated Discord. I lurk there. They're wonderfully supportive for both if you have depression or anxiety or just that sort of awkward social penguin thing. And it's just a nice grouping of gamers. And they're also fairly supportive of people who are fledgling content creators. The other one that I'm gonna name off is the NewTubers group, which again, you can find on Reddit and they do have an associated Discord. And they're an invaluable resource to people who are trying to start up channels and get healthy and productive habits for their channel. No, I'm not going to change my fucking uh, thumbnails to boobs. I have been told this by two- I literally have a comment on my channel from someone who's like, you know, you'd get a lot more subscribers and clicks if all your thumbnails were boobs. Yeah. And I was just like, nope. nope. I've got- I've got ways I could really be selling out, but I have this dedication to... Not being a clickbaity shit? Yeah, let's call it yeah. that. You know, yeah. I, I, I could be a, a, a Jakey Pauly vloggy boy if I wanted to, not that my <sighs> life is. A fraction of it's interesting, but I mean, a lot of kids seem to just enjoy watching people's lives, and I, I think that's a bit weird, personally, but I mean, I each mean, their own. there's a reason there's wireism porn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, horrible jokes. Anyways, uh, so if that sums up everything that we wanted to address, mm -hmm. then I suppose we'll leave off for now. Uh, yep. Again, thanks for being here, and to you folks who stay tuned, uh, thanks honestly for also offering your time to sit down and listen to this and hear our thoughts. Uh, if absolutely. If you like this sort of content, I would highly appreciate if you did share this with other folks that you might think would be interested just to pass on the whole mental health awareness thing. And hey, if you like the stuff we do with our channel, you know, like, comment, subscribe, click the bell so you're notified when we do stuff. There's still another two videos we're intending on touching on on mental health awareness, but most of our stuff's just nerdy game reviews for the indie scene and developer interviews. Anyways, that's all from me, so catch you next time.